So we have seen in the previous video that the worst case time complexity, that the worst case time complexity of quicksort, right, of quicksort is order of n square, especially if the array is already sorted in ascending order. Because what was happening there was we took the first element as our pivot, a problem of size n was getting broken down into a problem of size n minus 1, right? So let me just erase this. Right. So what was happening is X would remain the same and this became a problem of size N minus one. Right. And so on and so forth. If Y is the second smallest element, this was getting broken down into a problem of size X and Y would be here because they are the two smallest elements. And this was getting down. This was breaking down into a problem of size N by two, so on and so forth. And all this was happening because T of N is equal to T of N minus one plus CN because of this recurrence relation the worst case was becoming order of n square. So is there a fix for it? There is something called as a randomized quicksort. Very, very innovative idea, right? So the randomized quicksort says, okay, so what are we doing here? We are always picking, we are always picking our pivot. We are picking our pivot to be the first element of array A. So if I'm given an array A and let's assume this is index P and this is, let's say, index R, right? So my pivot is always AP, the first element of the array that I'm given. Because of this, because of this, we are running into this problem, right? Because X is the smallest element, because my pivot is the smallest element every time I'm running into this problem. So the randomized quicksort says, this is, this is extremely innovative. The randomized quicksort says, instead of picking the pivot to be the first element, what if I pick my pivot, what if I pick my pivot to be a random element, I'll pick it as a random element from my array A from index P to index R. Why should I pick this as my first, as, as, as my pivot element, right? I can pick any element here as my pivot element. I'll pick a random element. Let's see how it works, right? So imagine if I have this array, my first element is x1, second element is x2, third element is x3, so on and so forth xn. In the regular case, this is what I would always pick as pivot in the regular case. In this case, I will not do it. I have elements 1 to n. So I'll, I'll pick a random number, pick a random number. I'll pick a random number from in the range of 1 to n. Let's assume I got a value n1. Okay. Suppose I got a value n1. Okay. In the range of 1 to n1. This n1 could be anywhere. This n1 could be here, right? Let's assume I have a value, some value here. Let's assume I have a value of, uh, instead of n1, let's call it some other number because it's easier. Okay, let's assume when I pick a random number between 1 to n, I got a value m. Okay, that's easier. Okay, because I don't want too many superscripts and subscripts. So m will lie between 1 to n because I picked a random number from 1 to n. Now what I'll do? First thing, I'll pick a random number from 1 to n. And let that random number be m. Second thing what I'll do is I will swap, I will swap a1 with, I'll swap a1 with a m. So this basically means swap. And now I'll make my pivot. Now I'll make my pivot equals to a1. So what did I exactly do? I took this element. I took this element xm. I swapped x1 and xm. So what became xm, x2, x3, so on, so forth, x1, so on, so forth, xn. So I swapped these two. I literally swapped these two. Okay. Now I pick this as my pivot. Now, now what happens? Because m was picked randomly, because m was picked randomly, this will not be the smallest element anymore. Even if somebody gave me a sorted array, even if somebody gave me a sorted array, because I'm picking a random element from here as my pivot. So what did I do? I picked a random element. I swapped this random element XM with one and I picked A1 as my pivot. That's it. This is the only thing that I'll do before I start. So the only change is pick a random element at every item, given an array A1 to N that I have to apply quick sort on, pick a random element, swap this, and then recursively keep doing it. That's all I'll do, right? Now this XM is randomly picked, right? Which means XM, has a very, very low probability that it will be the smallest element, 
right so this randomized algorithm this randomized algorithm or randomized quick sort you can prove mathematically using probability you can actually show using probability so there is this whole idea idea called probabilistic analysis of algorithms there is this whole idea called probabilistic analysis of algorithms or it's also called as amortized analysis of algorithms right using the methods in probability we can show that for the randomized quick sort the worst case is order of n log n the beauty of the randomized quick sort is only in this specific case where the first element is the smallest the second element is the second smallest the third element is the third smallest only in this case things are breaking down that is that was my worst case right so let's fix it using randomization right so randomization in probability as we have just seen here is one of the greatest ideas okay so my favorite thing in whole of algorithms are randomized algorithms okay this is the simplest randomized algorithm of course one of the worst things with randomized algorithms is the rigorous mathematical proof about the about its time complexity that 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 is hectic there is a lot of mathematical theory that we have to go into there is a lot of mathematical proof that you have to go into okay even for randomized quick sort to prove that uh, to prove that the worst case of randomized quick sort is order of n log n is non trivial mathematically far more involved than just solving your simple recurrence equations okay solving recurrence equations is way way simpler than getting the probabilistic bounds or the amortized analysis of your quick sort right so by just introducing but intuitively it's very simple right instead of picking the smallest element every time i am just picking a random element as my pivot that's it my problem is solved intuitively it makes sense because when i pick a random element because when i pick a random element as my pivot suppose i picked up this element xm as my pivot okay the chance that xm is the smallest element so probably xm will lie here all the elements less than equal to xm will be here all the elements greater than equal to xm will be here the probability that xm is the smallest element every time is very low it's almost close to zero the probability of that is extremely low because the worst case happens only when every time in your in your algorithm you are picking the smallest element as the pivot every time if you do it only then you go into the worst case right and the probability of that happening especially when you are picking a random element is extremely low okay so randomized quick sort is your answer for the worst case of quick sort so the randomized quick sort has a time complexity of order of n log n while the non randomized version has a worst case of order of n square that is the important difference that you should always remember